Apple cider vinegar is a vital tool for insulin resistance, but the magic is in how you use it. Imagine trying to enjoy a burrito. Like a burrito is kind of funny. It's, it's kind of a healthy thing, really. You got like some good whole grains. You've got some jalapeno. You've got some capsaicin in the salsa. You've got fiber in the black beans. You maybe have a whole wheat tortilla. You have a lot of protein. It's really not that bad, but when you're dealing with insulin resistance, all you can think about is, holy cow, this is going to spike my blood glucose, spike my insulin, and it's just going to contribute to further insulin resistance. And that's not entirely incorrect, but that's where we can strategically use tools. And that's what I'm going to teach you in this video. I'm going to give you the playbook. I'm going to show you how you can use apple cider vinegar to mitigate insulin resistance and improve insulin sensitivity. I'm going to show you how to do that with each respective meal because it's slightly different. And thirdly, I'm going to show you what you should not do because there are some times that you absolutely shouldn't use apple cider vinegar. There was a study published in Diabetes Care. They used 20 grams of apple cider vinegar. That's not even that much along with a moderately rich carbohydrate meal. And they tested tested insulin resistant subjects and type 2 diabetic subjects. The insulin resistant subjects that had apple cider vinegar with their meal had a 34% improvement in insulin sensitivity. We're talking an immediate fix. Legit. Type 2 diabetics had a 19% improvement in insulin sensitivity. And that's saying a lot because the more insulin resistant that you are or the more diabetic that you are, the harder that it would be to elicit an effect like this. So let's get into the mechanisms of how it works so that we can then understand how to use it properly. Now, another thing that you can do that's relevant here that can kind of help you out is prior to a meal consuming some electrolytes because there's an interesting hack that salt can actually curb your appetite a little bit. So I put a link down below for a company called Element Electrolytes. They're great because they're much more sodium focused. So when you look at how salt can kind of curb your appetite, having some electrolytes before a meal can make it so that maybe you don't feel like eating quite as much. It's kind of a natural appetite suppressant in a way, not to mention you're getting your electrolytes in. So that link down below go to drinklmnt.com slash Thomas, and that gets you a free sample variety pack with any purchase from Element. So I highly recommend their lemonade salt flavor because that one feels like you're able to enjoy real lemonade without contributing to higher blood sugar. So check them out down below. Here's how the apple cider vinegar is actually working from a mechanistic standpoint. And I'm not going to get too far into the weeds with it. I'll just keep it simple. Number one, it helps you with gastric emptying. Okay, what that means is it's actually delaying how long it takes those carbohydrates to absorb through your intestines, which means your body has a chance to keep up with it. If you're insulin resistant, part of the problem is lots of carbohydrates dumping into the bloodstream at once. How is your poor pancreas supposed to handle all this happening at once when it's already running on two cylinders? So with this, you're slowly dripping the carbohydrates in and it can handle it better. This also gives you a fighting chance at sort of resurrecting the pancreas's function and being able to get better at using insulin and processing carbohydrates in the future. The other thing that it does is it decreases the carbohydrate breakdown out of the muscle. So a lot of times carbohydrates that are in your muscle are sort of slowly dripping carbohydrates into the bloodstream. Apple cider vinegar, because of the acetic acid, can sort of stop this process a little bit, which means you're not contributing to high blood sugar from your already existing carbohydrate stores. And lastly, this newer literature is suggesting that apple cider vinegar has metformin-like effects. And what I mean by that is it's helping to allocate the carbohydrates into glycogen storage in your muscle. So it's taking the carbs and rather than having them float around through the bloodstream, it's directing them into the muscle where we want them to be stored for later use rather than circulating through the bloodstream. So how do you use this to be able to enjoy the food that you want to enjoy, to be able to have that burrito? Well, the simple one that I've already kind of alluded to is just having it prior to a meal. You're setting yourself up for success that way. But what if it's not a burrito that you're interested in? What if it's more so setting yourself up for success the entire day? Well, I recently created a video that talked about how the meals that you eat with breakfast can actually affect how your body responds to a meal with lunch. So if you use apple cider vinegar with your breakfast meal and the carbohydrates that you have with breakfast, you're not only going to get the impact with breakfast itself, where you're improving insulin resistance there, but you're also going to have a potential benefit later on from that single use of apple cider vinegar. 
For example, you get up in the morning, maybe you want to have some oatmeal, purely hypothetical. That apple cider vinegar with that oatmeal is not only increasing the insulin sensitivity by 34% with that breakfast meal, but as a result, it's making it so that you respond better because your glucose levels have stabilized by lunchtime. So now, without even using additional apple cider vinegar, you've stabilized your blood sugar a little bit more at lunch as well. Now, another strategy that I like is using apple cider vinegar with your dinner meal. This is a very specific use case because we're not talking about just increasing insulin sensitivity here. We're talking about increasing insulin sensitivity so that your body can use those carbohydrates properly and have them shuttle into the right spot and keep your glucose stable when you go to bed. Imagine this for a moment. You just had a high carbohydrate meal and you go and you lay down for bed. You don't have any muscle movement to soak up that glucose, right? So that glucose is just circling around. What's the saying? Idle hands in the devil's workshop, right? So these glucose is just floating around, practically looking for things to do. And you're just laying there. And you've been there before. You know what that feels like. You had that meal that maybe just had a few too many carbs. And you go to lay down in bed and you just feel like you can't quite get comfortable. You're restless. You feel kind of warm. And you start to fall asleep and then you wake up. Or even worse, you feel like you slept really well. And then you look at your aura ring and your recovery score and it's in the toilet because your glucose glucose was all over the place and you weren't able to actually get into that REM sleep, yeah, it's a pretty cruddy feeling. You know what I'm talking about. So if you can utilize that apple cider vinegar, that 20 grams with dinner, it can help stabilize that glucose that you're not having so much of a big rise in glucose as you're laying down. This can help your cortisol levels. It can help your diurnal rhythms. And most importantly, it can help you wake up not feeling super hungry the next day. So you actually quite literally set yourself up for success the next day by having apple cider vinegar at night. Now, I promised you that I would talk about the way to not use it. When is the one time that you can think of that you might want to have carbohydrates absorb fast. It's going to be after your workout. Part of the problem with apple cider vinegar is that it delays gastric emptying. Most of us have heard by now about GLP-1s and Ozempic and some of the problems with those, right? They delay gastric emptying a lot. So apple cider vinegar isn't in that league, but the principle still applies. If you're having carbohydrates after a workout, you want those carbs to absorb fast. You want them to go into the muscle, replenish glycogen, and kickstart the recovery process. So apple cider vinegar could delay that which is going to prohibit you from getting the maximal recovery that you're looking for right out the gate. The bottom line is now you have a tool that doesn't cost much money at all. We're talking literally a couple of dollars that'll last you like a month that can modulate insulin resistance, that can increase insulin sensitivity by 34%, can help modulate cortisol and help you sleep better, and do a myriad of other beneficial things as far as enzymes and digestion is concerned. But we still need some other tools in our toolbox to help us sleep a little bit better and modulate cortisol to set us up for success. So I created a video that talks about the best way to reduce cortisol and be able to make it so you can sleep through the night without these big cortisol spikes. That video is right there. As always, keep it locked in my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.